Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, joined by Jonathan Hanford. This is the last video that we're doing on this series, and we've been mentioning lots of names, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to ask Jonathan, you know, a lot of people look up to you. I do. I think you're a fucking good estate agent. That's a technical term. But who do you look up to in a estate agency? Talk to me. So I think there's there's two pockets of people here. There's those that are what I would call cold face estate agents, and then there's the people within the business within the industry. Um, I think it's important to start with the cold face agents because they're the ones that are flying the flag for our mm -hmm. not for our business but for our profession. So over the years, I've been fortunate to, to work with some really good ones. Sean Newman's obviously a, 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 an obvious example. He doesn't really work at the coalface anymore, but there's a he's lot out of in Dubai there. doing weightlifting now, isn't he? Yeah, weightlifting, R lot of running, ripped, yeah, a um, lot of uh, smoothie drinking. But uh, again, lot from the day, uh, fierce competitor as an estate agent and very good at what he does. In more recent years, it's the people like Sam Funnel in rugby. You know, he was one of the first people in the country to be doing regular and consistent market update reports, um, doing video and presenting them mm. for his property, you know, and he's carved out a niche within his market and sort of set a precedent for other people. Within. He is good. Very good. He's a really nice guy as well. Um, the thing I always think about Sean Newman is that nothing's ever good enough, is it? No. No, no, no. Which is great. I mean, I've had him on the sofa here and I think that comes back down to the way he was brought up, which is not a bad thing. Yes. Yeah, agreed. So again, Sam's worked with, with, with Sean for years. So I think Sam is a, a really good example of a, a good professional estate agent. Lee Armstrong at Fine Country in Derby. Again, he's, uh, he's helped build a phenomenal business there. Very methodical and system driven. Um, he stands by his principles, an, an elite prospector. And I do mean elite. So he spends a lot of time on the road. And um, when I talked about having the discipline of being in the five sectors and maintaining consistent prospecting, he's textbook. He'd be the first person that I'd mm. think of when I think of that. Because if example. you haven't got prospecting, nothing else doesn't matter how good you are at the rest. No, absolutely. One feeds into the other. It's the lifeblood of the okay. business. Do check that out, boys and girls. We've done a video called The Top Seven Mistakes Estate Agents Make, and it's in there. Sorry, carry on. It's perfect. Um, some, of the other, some of the other people... Dan White, um, Fine and Country World, Wimbledon, a fair newcomer, a fairly uh, newcomer to the to the business. Uh, you know, Decent he's bloke. very good guy, um, very driven. Um, he's a very difficult market to get traction in. You know, they've got an old boys club there where they all club together and they do joint agency instructions. And he's already carving out a market share. He's raising the standards on what's possible. He's putting some great content out there. He's a learner. You know, he's constantly learning. He's sharing ideas. He's the first person to help other agents that are struggling. He's, he's somebody that I, I feel quite inspired by working alongside. And I think he's an incredible ambassador uh, for Fine and Country. Ben, Ben Madden, turn him green. You know, you've met him. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, he's he's built a successful business and sold it. He's very energetic. He's very, mm. he's, he's not afraid to do things outside of the norm. Um, and again. I love his videos. I mean, he he's up there in terms of my top three estate agents. Yeah. You know, he's up there with the Spencer Lawrences of this world. I know he's more lettings, but. Yeah. You know, oh, hungry yet humble. Yes. Yeah, he, just a genuinely nice guy. Uh, again, hard working. He deserves the success that he's got. Um, and, you know, we, we look at the, the, the range of fine and country representatives and, and ambassadors for the business. You know, you've got your good here. He's right up there. You know, if you could emulate him with a cloning machine, it would be perfect yeah. and conquer the world. So, um and I, I think he's, uh, he's he's very good at what he does. Um, I, again, I've mentioned her before, Vanessa <coughs> in Worcestershire, who interestingly uh, was working for a competitor when she sent me a picture of herself on holiday in South Africa and sent the selfie outside the Finding Country office there. And I'd known her for years because she'd worked within the newspaper industry. Um, she worked within the property section of a few different publications. So we'd already had a good working relationship in that sense. And I remember at the time just opening a dialogue and a bit of texting backwards and forwards. 
And then thankfully we met up and had a pizza and had a bit of coffee and everything afterwards. And then she joined the Fine and Country team and she's helped build a phenomenal okay. business in Worcestershire. Um, but she's done that through networking. You know, when we talk about being a good estate agent, I think being able to penetrate your local community by being a figurehead, by being a person of repute where you've, you know, people will know you and recommend mm. you. You know, Vanessa's the go-to person. Um, and, you know, she's, she's, she's such good fun as well. Um, so uh, again, she's she, she's a great. Um, so people within the industry. Any other agents? Um, yeah, there are uh, there are a few individuals that you look and think you know what they do within their part of the market is, okay. is really impressive. Ian Story, I think, is one. Um, you know, it, it, it's quite impressive to see the the impact that he's had within his uh, within his town. Cheshire, yeah. Um, which is uh, which is quite impressive. Anyone else? Uh, I think John Paul uh, again, in terms of being a methodical businessman, um, systems man, top top bloke. Yeah, I've met him a couple of times. Really nice guy, very humble. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to have a cage fight with him because no. obviously that's what I did originally. But you know, he's a. I think he's the epitome of the industry being better than it is mm. and raising the bar in terms of what's possible. And I think that's why he's been as successful as he has, because he's made other average agents look mm. look poor and what he's mm. done, what he does is exceptional. Um, you know, Michelle Gallagher, I'm really pleased for her and the, the success that she's had in uh, in recent years, which is great to see. And you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a big admirer of estate agency brands and businesses. You've got to look and you've got to admire Knight Frank and Savills and, and oh. those for what they do. Um, and you know there are there are good people within those businesses as well that I cross paths and cross swords with on a on a day to day basis, and actually it's nice that I've got good working relationships with them um, and I, you know respect what they do. We don't always have to be competing and fighting with each other. Sometimes it's good that we all we all recognise. So that's your cold face. What about the people who are in the background? Been around a bit now uh, to to even look back over the last 20, 25 years in the the Peter Knights of the world. Uh, you know, I think, again, a great influence on me, you know, hearing him speak on stage, you can't help but have a bit of a man crush in terms of the, the way you know, how yeah, he, is. Yeah, he is exceptional, truly exceptional. There's not many people in this world that I that I go wow with, but he is one. Yeah. Yeah. He is a, uh, he is a good egg. Um, and it, uh, I think Simon Whale, love him or loathe him, I think the fact that he just doesn't care what other people think and he's afraid he's not afraid to put it he's all very, out very 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 clever man it's very a... very smart very smart yeah i think i love him to bits and like his mom might you love him or hate him i i think he's exceptional very yeah. very good man and i think he's um it was a lot of stuff in terms of his morality his heart's in the right place mm -hmm. you know and he's uh, he's unshakable in his belief with a few things in terms of social justice and stuff like that mad as a box of frogs mm -hmm. and again if you didn't know him and you saw some of his content you'd think he, he he'd probably be um institutionalized <laughs> yeah um yeah he's actually a genuinely nice guy just don't go and drink him with him at a, a, a conference yeah definitely not anyone else uh look you know I think someone like John Cook who I'm working closely with now at Nurture Group um it's it's good to see his influence on the business and you can see why he's been such a dynamic figure Exceptional in the industry mate. over the last 20 years and he's very he's very curt he's very to the point he's again he is he's a bit like me he's a bit of a figures person which again relates to me and resonates mm. with the, with the way that i work um and he's not afraid to make big jumps and big commitments he's very strategic big picture person yeah very very good Definitely. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's good, to, good to see his influence within, uh, within the industry and within, within the group as well. So, yeah, that's okay. uh, it's a nice person to partner with and work alongside. I'll tell you the other, the other person that you, you look at, and he's got a horrible nickname within the industry, which is Pistol Pete, having never worked with him, but Peter Rawlings from uh, what was originally Foxton's and then Marsh and Parsons. And I've been very fortunate to, to speak with him on a panel at Stamford Bridge a lot of admiration for him in terms of he's been on that so for a few months ago and i tell you what he was worth every not that we no one gets paid to be here or, or vice versa but he was worth every penny he, exceptional yeah 
very, very clever. Very, player, very, very good. On. Obviously, I think he was a cornerstone behind the success of Foxton's. Well, he's back there now, isn't he? Yeah. As an executive, yeah. And you, and you kind of find that that is quite often the case. There's somebody that's the engine behind everything, making it go. And, you know, I've, uh, I've got a lot of admiration on what he did with Marsh and Parsons in an incredibly short mm. space of time. And I'll never forget him speaking at a conference saying, I found this old classic car in a garage that had been unloved and unused for many years. And we polished it up and brought it out. And obviously, you know, I mean, a, a powerhouse within the, within the sector. So, yeah, there's a, a few people there. Thank you for your time today, my friend. It's okay. been exceptional. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's been a really enjoyable experience. No worries. Thank you.